Uh, to kick off this next session, uh, let me introduce to you uh, Ian Fordham of the EdTech program, uh, who's going to be uh, chairing, uh, I think, what's going to be a very interesting panel discussion. So a huge round of applause for Ian Fordham, please. Thank you, colleagues. Um, I'm going to get my uh, fantastic Avengers to assemble on the uh, panel here. Um, I'm uh, the co-founder of the Education Foundation, and we're the UK's first cross-sector education think tank. And our big flagship program is something called the EdTech Incubator. And we're launching this program uh, later on this year in Wales. And we're absolutely delighted to have some fantastic um, panelists to join me to talk a little bit about EdTech, accelerating EdTech, using teacher entrepreneurs in really radically different ways. And I think a lot of the conversation has been about young people's digital skills. So I'm really delighted to be able to come over here in a second and just talk to our panelists about how do we mobilize teachers and teacher entrepreneurs in radically different ways. Absolutely delighted to be here. Um, and just for the Twitter cheat sheet here, we've got at Stu Arthur, at Doodle Maps, Maths, and Claire at the end is at Chepstow Heads. That shows how digitally switched on we are today, this afternoon. So I'm just gonna join the panel here. Here. And um, I just wanted to know, um, Stu, we've, um, we've been having conversations for quite a long time. You're the new CTO of Monmouthshire Council, and you've also just come in straight from the commercial sector as well. I just want you to share just why, why Monmouthshire are taking on this kind of ed tech program and now, why, why be interested in this, and why is it important for Wales? Sure. Thank you, Ian. Um, yeah, I mean, I've spent uh, most of my career in the private sector running a, a medium-sized software business. So you may think it's quite an interesting uh, move into the public sector. Um, I guess I, I ran a few steering groups for Welsh Government um, in the education uh, space, specifically looking at redesigning the current ICT curriculum um, and provided a series of recommendations. So I think that really kind of whetted my appetite for um, the education space and also the public sector, because I thought, you know, there's a huge opportunity to do things differently. Um, so I was uh, fortunate enough to be offered a position uh, with Monmouthshire Council. Um, Monmouthshire prides itself on doing things differently. It's a very innovative place to work. Um, it, it, it kind of operates a bit more like a private sector business does in, in the sense that it, it, you know, it prides itself on being agile, um, looking for opportunities to develop commercial products. Um, so that was the reason I made the move. Um, through that uh, work, I've been designing um, a, an iCounty strategy, um, which is about you know, making um, smarter decisions with our own internal infrastructure, getting control of our IT systems back using agile and open source technologies. Um, so just, again, just trying to, trying to do things differently and avoiding vendor lock and block. Um, that's a big part of the, the strategy. Um, we're also trying to um, build uh, technology industry, um, so trying to encourage startups, uh, developing local businesses, and trying to um, create smarter, more connected communities. Um, and so through that work, um, you know, we're looking at a number of external companies to help support us and bootstrap a lot of the work we need to do. Education's a key strand because you know, we have a lot of work to do in the technology space and we need software developers now and in the future. Um, we started working with um, Ian Fordham recently to create like a business acceleration program in the education space. Um, through that program, we're gonna try and find the best opportunities to build technology products, help them get to market, which will create jobs. Um, but more importantly, it's about potential for us. We're trying to create, you know, the workforce of the future. Um, and there's a lot of synergy between the Education Foundation in terms of their principles. Um, and it's important for us as Monmouthshire that we talk to external companies. You know, we don't want to be insular. We want to see what's going on in the outside world and bring um, as many, you know, key delivery agents into Monmouthshire. Um, and that, that's kind of the reason why. And um, I'll jump over to Claire, actually, and uh, you can feel free to use the other mic there to, uh, to do that. And you're a real-life head teacher um, in a real-life school in Monmouthshire. And uh, we were talking a little bit about 
teacher entrepreneurship. And when we first ran our program, we talked about teacher entrepreneurs. And I think there's like a cringe around the room about the whole idea that teachers and leaders can be entrepreneurs. It's not like Dragon's Den. What's your kind of sense of this sort of digital space at the moment? What are the opportunities in this space? And, and could there be an opportunity for more teacher entrepreneurs to emerge? I think one of the key things is that people have historically considered the education and entrepreneurial spirit or business world uh, have a complete disconnect, whereas actually we exist in the same space. In terms of um, digital entrepreneurial um, activity, I suppose, I think it's a mistake for teachers to think that IT is something you do rather than something that facilitates what it is that we all do. I think um, one of the key things, if we are to be part of an improving education system, which is certainly where I come from, is that we need to be able to use the tools that will help us to do that. Part of that is looking to the future about what our young people will be doing, sort of providing jobs for those for the future, but also for teachers to start thinking about um, education isn't something that you, you start at the beginning of your career. It looks pretty much the same at the end of your career and you haven't done much different in between. Whereas actually we have to be agile in terms of responding to what's out there. We need to be able to show, um, to show and demonstrate the skills that the young people will need in the future. And also teachers have got the ability to understand what the problem is and sometimes they need some support in terms of looking at how to find that solution. And so I think teacher entrepreneurial um, workshops and, and courses will help there. Fantastic. And, and, and in America, this is a book called uh, uh, Becoming the Teacherpreneur. And it's one of those, all, again, you think, oh, God, that's in a very American way. And it's about teachers who want to lead, not leave. I know it's very cringeworthy, but um, trying to get this kind of balance between what goes on in the classroom and also trying to kind of come up with these great ideas. Just Tom, before we kind of just go to a slightly more open kind of part of the panel, Tom, you're one of our kind of guinea pigs in this first kind of program. Um, you are a teacher, you were a teacher, and then you've gone on to become a, run a fantastic startup. Do you want to talk a little bit about your sort of entrepreneurial journey and just how that came about? Sure. No, I mean... I was one of those teachers who was in the classroom and perhaps slightly frustrated with uh, the IT that I was using. Um, it wasn't a light bulb moment, it was perhaps an accumulation of those frustrations which, which led me and my wife and co-founder, who's also a maths teacher, to develop Doodle Maths. And uh, we, we, we sat around the kitchen table and we decided what it wanted to look like and then we thought, brilliant, there's our idea, we've sketched it out on paper. What we need is a coder. We need someone to make this happen. Uh, and that was probably our first and a big mistake because at that stage, we didn't need a coder. We needed some mentorship, some guidance, some support to, uh, to help us make the right decisions at that point. So nonetheless, we proceeded and we, we developed the app and Doodle Maths was released in the App Store um, a little over a year ago. Um, and it was good, it did most of the things that we wanted to, to do. It was, it was personalized, it was mobile. Um, children liked using it, they engaged in it, they learned through doing. It moved away from a lot of the, um, the principles that maths technology, maths websites had, had worked towards till then, which was perhaps replacing teachers and a, a lot of video and animation explanations. So we were pleased with what we got. Uh, and we almost thought that it was job done until we did hear of um, the ed EdTech uh, Accelerator EdTech Incubator Program. And it was in autumn last year we went along and uh, we trekked up to London from Bath where we're based. And uh, we attended the first session. Not sure how much we get out of it, instantly realized that there was an awful lot for us to learn. One of the first questions, one of the... Uh, one of the people there asked me is, have you got any analytics in your app? So I didn't even know what analytics were. No one had discussed this with us in terms of the coders. We got analytics in there. We know now how people use our apps. And in fact, that's been instrumental in helping us gain investment to take our app further forward. So, um, and that was just all from the first session. We worked our way up to London through tube strikes and, and you know, gales, uh, downpours. The M4 was shut. We managed to get up there every one of the 10 weeks. Every one of the 10 weeks was really, really, really useful. So thank you. <laughs> that's all right. That's okay. Um, so, and we are going to bring the program to Wales. Um, I'm conscious of time. And just, again, with all the stuff that we do is we've got some fantastic experts on, on the panel here. And you've got a fantastic audience here in terms of 
if we were thinking more radically about ed tech in Wales and what we actually do here, I mean, I've, we've had some conversations about some kind of more radical steps in this kind of space. Stu, what, what sort of the things that are kind of really frustrating in terms of this entrepreneurial spirit? What are the things that need to be unblocked? What are the things that need to be sorted out now that this program could perhaps be uh, to try to solve some or some of the solutions for? Thank you. Um, <clears throat> for, for me, base, this is based largely on my own experiences. I think it's about creating the right conditions for innovation and entrepreneurship. Um, we, we seem to have this kind of issue at the moment where funding is about big bang procurement processes. Um, it's very easy to fund uh, something like a call center where there's clear job creation. I think we're less savvy about opening up investment for things that have huge potential, um, that are risky. Um, part of the issue is because of the way that we measure things. It's so the way we measure learning, the way we measure, measure success. So for me, the, the biggest barrier is kind of unpicking um, those issues and creating the right conditions for us to tr truly achieve our potential. Um, so I would like to see Welsh Government really kind of look at the way that you know, they approach funding because there's a lot of great initiatives out there in Wales, many of which we won't even have heard of, and all they need is a bit of a helping hand to get started. So let's try and make things as simple as possible. Let's try and you know, increase the pace at which we can move, make funding easier to access, take some risks, um, and really start, as I say, to change the conditions in Wales. Um, because we look, all looked at the stats earlier, we're falling behind. Um, everyone here has talked a great game, but let's actually make this happen. You know, we need to talk in, in terms of weeks, not, not years. Um, and that's where I feel we are right now. We really need to rethink that model. Tom, I'm going to, I'm going to ask you sort of second to last, because um, as you're not we're currently working in Wales and probably hope to be working in Wales, just what would be the kind of right conditions for you if you were kind of bringing your startup to Wales and what, what do teachers need to be doing, what do businesses need to be doing to help accelerate your work? Um, well, what we found really useful in London and in Bath are um, the local innovation centres which are attached to universities. Um, they're tremendous resources, they're ten tremendous networking centres and uh, we found that very useful up in London at the Google campus. We found it very useful um, with Set Squared and the uh, Set Squared partnership and the Bath University Innovation Centre. Uh, I'm not sure what facilities in Wales exist like that, but uh, those centres at the moment are incubating a lot of fantastic tech startup businesses. And Claire, sort of finally, and kind of, I, I think we might be kind of coming towards the end of our session, but I just think if we were to be really radical, what, was, what are the kind of key steps that need to be taken, both on the teaching side, but also on the more entrepreneurial side? What can the Welsh Government do? What can businesses do to be more successful in this space? I think it's about encouraging education to be about risk taking as opposed to being a, a linear process that we all pass through. I think it's about encouraging um, the curriculum to stop being about IT as something you, you study but that something is embedded throughout. I think that has huge um, uh, lessons then for teacher learning. Stop looking at five inset days as being about doing literacy, about doing numeracy and putting everything in a box for that actually start to looking at how you take young teachers and lead them all the way through the profession so that they feel able to take risks. And I think it's about multi-using schools. I'm really keen that we start to look at our school as being not just something that educates young people, but that adults are educated in, and that as we look to the future and if we have the, the vision of startups, that actually we have spaces that are, are used not 100% of the time that would have startup incubation businesses. And I think if we can do that, working in partnership with the people who, who want to lead that way, then actually we start to look at a future that, that's world class, not just UK class, if you like. Thank you. And thank you for your time for listening to our great panel about our program in terms of the EdTech Accelerator. We're now, this is the kind of the preview of the kind of program. We're looking for educators, we're looking for business leaders, we're looking for other, for Welsh government to kind of support and, and get behind the kind of program that we're doing because we're in this kind of test and prototype phase at the moment. Um, there's a great quote about running a startup, which is like, <laughs> running a startup is like throwing yourself off a cliff and building a plane on the way down. 
this is kind of what it feels like sometimes when you're getting something up off and off the ground we'd really really be pleased for for, for welsh leaders to kind of get behind the programs and, and these are the kind of people that are going to make it happen so thank you very much Thank you.